Four years back, it was around 16% of all US TV households had at least one enabled smart TV. Four years later, almost half of all homes have at least one enabled smart addressable TV. With a clear growth acceleration of 47% today, heading toward 250 million sets that will exist across the US. So amazing capabilities to unlock more advances for television advertising, both in terms of content distribution, advertising, as well as the way in which to manage inventory in the constrained supply that exists in television today. Got it. When you talk to programmers, um, what's their perspective around addressability is is the upside big enough for them? Are they worried about the move? Give us your perspective of the temperature of the, of the publisher side, programmer side. Yeah, I think programmers are looking at ways in which they can drive better yield for themselves, but even more importantly, yield for their advertisers. They see real value of being able to take a first party or third party segment and really activate that on behalf of their uh, advertiser. And so I think they're really leaning in. You're seeing a lot of that in kind of the audience-based buying, being able to really kind of reach an ad schedule against a consumer segment defined very uniquely by that unique advertiser. And then as we do one-to-one -one addressable, really being able to kind of fine hone on how you get that right message at the right time in, fr in front of that right consumer. Got it. So, um David Kenny is your new CEO is not quite a year in the company. Give us your perspective of the vision he has and how that's affecting your day to day. Yeah, I couldn't be more excited. Under David Kenny's leadership, we're really evolving as a measurement company and really playing across the broader ad tech ecosystem. You know, we've made a number of strategic acquisitions, some prior to David Kenny's arrival, but most notably with the Sorensen Media acquisition in February that really enables us to start to bring best of breed tech assets that Nielsen has under our roof and which to really try to unlock across the industry in a, in a true collaborative way, which is one of David's real premise, how to really work collaboratively and unlock the value of our measurement data more in more ways than what we're doing today and unlock the value of our technology and things that we can do to help our clients grow. Got it. So last question. Um, the session today opened with Tim Castry. Um, he gave a view that said, for the industry to get it right, we ought to be able to evaluate all media on an impressions basis, um, age, sex, demographic, with an advertiser-defined target mm -hmm. overlaid. How far away do you think we, we are from Nielsen being able to reflect that in planning transacting and then measurement tools? I think, you know, Nielsen has really evolved our measurement. We have C3, C7, we have digital ad ratings, we've got SVOD ratings, we have out of home. We've really tried to follow the consumer, but also bring the flexibility to the marketplace that they're desiring. Knowing that at the end of the day, we're not really setting the rules or the constraints around the way that the industry wants to transact, but looking at how we can break through some of those constraints that have been in place to help bring more flexible metrics, an ability to basically execute in the way that Tim spoke about. Uh, whether that's in an advanced segment way, you know, we launched our advanced audience suite and um, we're really excited about the opportunities that that enables in real time for an advertiser to bring a first party segment, run a true linear ad schedule and get real ratings and reach against what that actual segment delivered across all networks uh, duplicated. So I think, you know, at the end of the day, we are working to unlock value and to collaborate with the industry and really kind of create the sets of data that's going to help move the industry forward for the future.